Okay, before we get into the project for today, I wanted to talk briefly, I get questions all the time, you know, about taking care of tools and different questions about the malfunctions and it's hard to do when I don't have the tool in front of me and sometimes it's better off just chucking the tool and buying another one. What I do do once a week or once every other week is I tell myself before I do anything, I'm going to take a piece of equipment or I'm going to take this little group of tools or I'm going to spend 45 minutes and all I'm going to do is do maintenance work. Now this morning I decided I'm going to do maintenance work on my welding cart and my welder and the welding equipment and I'll dedicate like 45 minutes like I said or an hour and I go through and I just tune things up and adjust them and play around and I'm going to show you so hang on follow me that way okay this is my welding cart it's got my Millermatic 211 on it it's got my Powermax 30 plasma cutter and this is a cart I built myself it's got my tank in the back and I'm going to pan around it slowly but I'm going to spend a little bit of time this morning and I'll show you what I go through when you know I do my maintenance work sometimes it's fast and easy sometimes I get caught up and spend more time than I should one of the things on the forum is somebody had asked hey can you show us how you made that tool hanger you welded to the side of it let me zoom in okay here's a zoom in shot and it kinda looks like a moose head with a couple of bolts for eyes right there and it comes up and I made this just playing around one day didn't know what I was gonna do with it didn't want to put it up on the wall and I thought, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tack weld this thing to the MIG cart that I built. And I'll use it to drape things, hoses or whatever. And that's kind of what I did. And then I use those horseshoes and those spikes. You can see right here and over here. And I welded a horseshoe and a spike on both sides. And I use that to wrap my cords. So like this one right now, it's wrapped with my plasma cutter cords both of them it's wrapped with my plasma cutter cords now on the other side i'll show you in a minute is the side i use to wrap my welding ground clamp and cords and all that stuff the other side i use to do the same thing i'll show you in just a sec okay so again here's one more shot of it and so what have i done today i've taken the cords i've extended everything out i've taken grease cleaner or some kind of a cleaner I wipe down all my cords, I wipe down both those boxes, and there's my tray in the front that I built, and I'll pan in here in a second show you, and I go through it, throw out things, or rearrange and organize, and I just play around and go top to bottom, going through everything. One moment, and I'll show you the other side. Okay, here's a shot of the back side. The cords come down. For that plasma cutter, I've got them wrapped like I said around those uh, holders but then I come down and here's the tank I got my chain securing it I keep a sledgehammer on it just because I don't have any other place to put it let's pan around the other side now here's a shot of the other side it may come out a little bit darker but it has my big C clamps hanging from it and then you just come on down and where those C clamps are hanging is where I drape and I wrap the cords for my MIG welder and everything in my garage is kind of mobile I don't have a lot of room so I'm able to wheel things around and pull it out of the way now what I did with the C clamps and I do this with a lot of my clamps is I use my wire wheel I'll pan around and show you what I do oh, probably every year or so actually I don't do it that often I take my C clamps and I run the wire wheel down the threads on them and then I shoot some silicone or I shoot oil on them because it keeps them nice and spinning free. So hang on, I'll just show you real quick what I do with that. Okay, this is what I do. I take a C-clamp like I have here, turn this on, I clean those threads up really good and then I just take, you use WD-40, this is WD-40 silicone spray right here, I just go like this. That's it. And this thing, look at this, this thing just spins like there's no tomorrow. Just because it took me about less than one minute to clean up those threads. Alright, that's all I do to those big C clamps. But I do keep them clean and I wire brush them because it's just a real easy thing to do. And it's just a nice thing when they spin freely. Okay, this is the front of the MIG cart. I wipe everything down. There's a tray that I told you about. There's a little gun holder right here. Just took a piece of pipe and welded it to it. And I got this one here. It's a bar because I don't want my cords hitting anything sharp. So when I made this, I even ground down 
all of the fine sharp points. Over here I've got four little pieces of pipe. I was going to scrap them out and I just welded them in there and I'd probably weld more if I had them because they make great little holders. There's my MIG pliers. Inside of here I just have, I have a chipping hammer. I have this little cardboard box here. It's got nothing but MIG parts and MIG tips and whatever. So if I run into a problem or I'm changing wire I can change the tips. I carry three different kinds of tips in there, you know, 030, and there's a couple of others. Sometimes when I go buy wire, if I buy a different size wire, I don't have to worry about having the wrong tip. I always have assortment of tips. The tips are cheap. It's good to have a little supply of them in backup. Now, somebody on the forum said, what kind of wire do you use? Well, I use Lincoln Electric Super Arc. You can buy it out at Home Depot. I also use, from Air Gas, I use their brand of MIG wire. Now, I think it's Radner, if I remember, but um, Air Gas, because I've got a good friend, he manages it out there. I work with his wife, all that good stuff. The MIG wire is really good, and the MIG wire from Lincoln is really good. And then somebody said, well, isn't Harbor Freight MIG wire good? Yeah, I suppose, but I can't comment on it because I've never bought it because for just a few dollars more or a little bit more the super arc works good especially if you're working with you know like corroded and rusted up material where you can't always weld prep it so the super arc I mean I don't know I like it you know other people may have different comments on it the same stuff from air gas I mean whenever I run across it and I always keep a backup spool of wire on my cart so you'll see that right there. But uh, those are my thoughts on the MIG welder. Now there's one thing about my MIG welder I'm not real fond of and that's this grounding clamp here. I've repaired it three or four times because the wire right here always seems to work itself out. Then I have to take and I have to recrimp it and play around. I haven't exchanged it yet but the one thing I'll say about Harbor Freight is they make one out of brass. It's real heavy duty and I think it's about 12 bucks somewhere in there. I would buy it whenever I think about it and I'm out there because the way that the grounding cord secures to the clamp is superior and it's just a superior grounding clamp all the way around. I just keep forgetting to buy it. Now the other thing I use a lot of is I use this stuff right here. I buy it at Air Gas. You can buy it online at Amazon. It's called Radner Anti-Splatter. I did a little video on using it so you can refer back to that but I'll show you briefly how I use it on my gun. Okay, here's my gun. Here's the tip. So before I start any project, I always take the tip off. I look at this right here and I see how corroded and how messed up it is. So now on my MIG wires, I got this little, little groove in here, a little round groove. It's for removing the tip and putting a new one on. But I also use it to scrape crap off from around it right up at the tip. Do it gently. These things are made out of copper. But right there, this cleaned up the tip real well for the moment. Okay, so that's that. Now, the shield itself is right here, and you can see it's got some crap in it. Now, the another nice thing about these MIG pliers right here, I can stick the snout in there and just turn it back and forth like this and wiggle it around, and it gets it perfectly clean. So, then I use this Radner spray, and before I weld, I just shoot it all around in, this, in the face of this tip right here. I put a little bit on the tip out here. Now I'm going to get a lot of comments about, well, that's ridiculous, you shouldn't do that, or whatever. This works for me. It keeps all of that splatter and all of that crap from building up in here for quite a while. And if I forget to spray it, that's when I get the buildup. And you can also use it on metal. So this works real good. There's the holder. And I put my grounding clamp on. Okay, up. I open up the side door on here to show you the inside part of this 211. Now, I did a whole video on this 211. You can refer back to it. But I've got, I check and see how much wire I got. I got quite a bit. Blow the dust out of this. Keep everything as clean as I can. It's just part of my, like I said, my maintenance routine. Up here's a chart. This is kind of nice and it comes in handy occasionally, especially when you're first starting and you want to play around. It asks you here. There's a column. What material are you using? Well, steel. So I'm going to be within this block. Now, are you using solid wire or flux cord? Well, I'm using solid wire. 
So here's a column here, my two solid wires. But it says, wait a minute, what kind of gas are you using? Well, I have the 7525. Okay, so now I'm using steel, I'm using solid wire, and now I'm using the 7525 mix. Now it asks you over here, what wire size are you using? Well, today I'm using the 0 .030, so I'm going to stay right here. And you keep working your way over to the right. That's what makes this kind of handy. Now this group is for a 120 volt setup. I don't have mine set up that way. It comes with a 120 volt plug if I want to use it. I'm not using it. I like using the 220. So that puts, or the 230. That puts me over here. So now I know all of this and I just keep coming across on this row. And it says, okay, what are you welding? And you got 24 gauge, 20, 22, 18, and so on and so on. And then you start getting into 1 8, 3 16, 1 quarter, 3 8. You follow this over until you find the material. Let's say I'm using 1 8. We'll follow it over. 1 8, it says here to set my dials in the front. It says to set my dials at 4.5 and 65. Let's go back to the front. 65 is the wire speed. So I would set this at 65 if I'm using that chart and 4.5 right here. Now I'm not. Now I use it another way where I just tell it right here what size wire am I using? 030, these are a couple of standards, 030, 035. And then I come down here and it's saying how many inches thick is the material. Well, it's about one quarter. I'm doing like horseshoes and railroad spikes. And I start off here. Now, I can tweak this. I don't need to tweak this one. I'll tweak this one as I go. Make it burn hotter, make it not burn so hot. And I've gotten to the point now where I can just adjust my knob and figure out what feels good to me and what I like welding at, and that's what I go with. Okay, folks, that's all I got on my maintenance of my welding cart, my welder that I go through. And anything else I can see that might need some attention, but that's generally all I do. I don't have to do much for my plasma cutter. Just maintain the tips and the consumables, and I don't use it that often. I'm not using it as often as I thought. Anyway... That's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, you want me to do more, give me a thumbs up, make a comment, hit subscribe, all that good stuff. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. You folks have a good day. Bye-bye.